Welcome to part two of Pythagorean Theorem Notes and its Converse. Uh, we're going to start this part of the video by talking about more advanced problems that involve radicals. I'm going to show you how to type under the calculator um, because it can be kind of confusing if you don't type them in exactly the right way. So the same process applies, the numbers just look a little bit different. Okay, so the difficulty is not um, any higher, it's just you got to be careful with the details here. So same formula as before, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, number five's got two numbers with radicals in it and the missing side here. So let's first find out which one's C. So we'll go to your right angle, draw an arrow across. It looks like the square root of 13 is our C. Now, when you write this in your formula or in your equation, make sure you put parentheses around that number. It becomes very important when you type it into the calculator. Um, this is A, that's B, we'll say. Again, that doesn't matter. Um, 2 root 3, all of that is in parentheses. That's very important you do that. And then x squared here. Okay. Now, to calculate these, you're simply going to just type them in as you see them. So, parentheses, 2 square root 3 squared, you get 12. plus x squared. Now this one, whenever you have a radical by itself, not like here where you have 2 root 3, but let's say you said just square root of 13, the square root of 13 squared is just 13. And that's because the square root and the square kind of cancel each other out. It's kind of like adding 5 and like subtracting 5. You end up at the exact same spot. And in case you guys need to check that, let's type in the calculator real quick. You'll end up with a result of 13. So now we're going to solve for x squared. x squared equals 1. Square root both sides. x equals 1 mile. And that's a problem where you have, um, have radicals inside the, the parentheses and squaring them. The problem, again, doesn't become any more difficult. It's just you have to be careful with the details here. When you're typing this into the calculator, you cannot forget parentheses. All right, the last part of the notes today is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, here's a sentence that kind of explains what's going on here. If the sum of the squares of the two smaller sides of the triangle is equal to the square of the longest side then the triangle is a right triangle. So what that means is, essentially, if your equation, if both sides are equal to the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if they're exactly the same number on both sides, you have a right triangle. If one side's bigger than the other, yes, it's a triangle, it's just not a right triangle. And that's what you're going to be determining on the back here. All right. So let's look at a few examples here. So sometimes they give you a picture, sometimes they don't. So we're, we're going to kind of go over how to determine which one's the longest side. In a picture example, it's pretty obvious which one should be the longest. It should, the one looks kind of like a hypotenuse already. So that's where we're going to choose to be C, okay? And again, these ones can be A, B, or this could be B, A. It does not matter. So take your equation, A squared plus B squared oops, equals C squared. Plug in those numbers. So 12 squared plus the square root of 82 squared equals the square root of 226 squared. So what you're going to do is type this in. 12 squared is 144. The square root of 82 squared, again, we talked about in the previous problem, the square root and the square, if it's by itself, cancels out, and you just have 82. Same thing here. The square root of 226 and the square cancel out, 
you get 226. 144 plus 82 ends up being 226. And you can see these two sides are equal. So what you're going to say is, yes, it's a right triangle. And that's all you have to do. Determine if the two sides are equal. If they are, you say yes, it's a right triangle. If the two sides are not equal, you say no. It's not a right triangle. That's all you have to do for these problems. Number two, they don't give you a picture. So how do you know which one's the biggest side length? I got nine and 14. I can tell which ones are bigger out of those two, but what, you know, what number is that? Well, do a quick calculation. What is five root three? It's about 8.66. So in ranking these numbers, this would be C, because it's 14 is the biggest. And this could be A, and this could be B. So my equation, A squared plus B squared plus C squared. I'm going to do 9 squared, 5 root 3. All of that goes in parentheses. It's very important that you do that. Um, if you don't, you're not going to square the 5, and you're going to get the wrong answer. Now, it doesn't work like before because the radical's not by itself, so we do have to type that in. So we're gonna type in parentheses five, square root three, squared, and you get 75. Um, nine squared we know is 81 from our calculators. 14 squared from our calculator is 196. 81 plus 75, that's 150 plus six, so 156. And as you can see, those are not equal. So you put not a right triangle. So first two problems, equal, yes, it's a right triangle, not equal, not a right triangle. And that's pretty much it for the notes. Um, we can do one more example. And let's try number five here, this picture. So again, from the picture, judging by the look of it, this would be our hypotenuse if this were a right triangle. So we're testing this. We're going to make that one C. We're going to make that one A and that one B. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A, 4 root 3. We are not going to forget our parentheses around that um, coefficient and the radical. B is 11 squared. And then C, 13 squared. So typing in 4 root 3 squared, so it's actually the same as this one, except the 5 gets replaced with a 4. I got 48 with my calculator. 11 squared is 121. 13 squared is 169. 48 plus 121 is 169. So guess what? This is a right triangle. Yes, it's a right triangle. All right, so that's part two of the notes. We talked about how to actually prove whether or not a triangle is a right triangle using the formula. If both sides are equal, you say, yes, it's a right triangle. If the two sides are, are um, unequal, you say it's not a right triangle. And that's pretty much it. We also talked about how to actually plug in these radicals. And when you have two numbers, um, one under a radical, one not, making sure you put those in the parentheses. It's very important when you calculate. If you don't, you get the wrong answer. Okay, that's it.